What's going on, everyone? It's Corey and Jack here from The Break Evens, giving you another podcast today. We're up to round 10, which means we're almost at the second DPP switch. Um, And there's a few juicy DPPs, but I'll get into them um, in a second. So don't forget, uh, let's go through our socials. So you can find us on Twitter at Break Evens Pod on the road to 500 followers over there. We've got um, a, f- a few new people jump in, so don't forget to hit that follow button and keep up with all of our content. And we usually put some polls um, and some questions out there as well, so you can interact there. You can find us on YouTube at The Break Evens. We've been going crazy with our YouTube shorts. It seems like everyone likes them, so we're going to keep doing them. Um, make sure you hit the subscribe button because we're on the road to 200. We've gotten, I think we're about 121 subscribers now. Um, we've got a bit of a jump, so make sure you click subscribe and keep up with all of our podcasts and all of our shorts. We do our mini series during the week, and then we cover all games over the weekend. So make sure you click that subscribe and you keep up with everything. And don't forget, we are on Facebook now. Search the Break Evens Pod. You will see our logo there. Give us a like and a follow because everything we post on Twitter gets posted in there as well. So it's just another place where you can keep up with all of our content and all of the football and super coach news. That being said, Jack. How'd you go last week, mate? Well, I scored 2,121, um, which mm. made me drop 1,500. That's unlikely. Which is a bit tough because I scored something like 80 or 100 less than you, and yet you're gaining, and yet I'm dropping 1,500. Like, they're very close margins. Um. Had the likes of Dawson, like everyone, not doing great. Um, my two big ins this week didn't really pop off. Um, Howe got an 81 and Noah Anderson an 88, which, um, you know, obviously isn't great. Um, Taranto a 90, a lot of people have him, but that's a low one. Laird subbed out with 98. That hurt a little bit, um, and even though he's not on the bloody injury list, it was a bit scary at the start, thinking he's gone down again. Um, English with an 88, obviously the second time under 100 since I brought him in and for the season, which I think it's two and four weeks. There's something going on there, and... Uh, Chisel's had his, as we can actually say, his first poor game. Yep. That's not so, injury affected. Not injury affected or tagged, because yep. he was also tagged. Um, and obviously had the great Seamus Mitchell on the bench, who was 74. Lovely. Which doesn't help. But yeah, no, my team went all right. The uh, captaincy on Oliver, not great but there really wasn't except for like Golden I think Golden Marshall and Dacos were the only three to score more than Oliver in my team this week who I had a captain. Yep. So it's not like I chose the it's like I didn't like no one performed pretty much. Yeah, it was one one of those weeks it was a very lower scoring um, week, except for the person who um, scored two thousand five hundred and won the one k, you know. And then you look at you look at his team, and you're like, what was going through his brain to put that together, and it worked. Everyone has Jordan Degoe. I I, I I might just have to buy Jordan Degoe. <laughs> well, not everyone. Um, there's actually not that many people who have him. Um, let me actually have a look because. I was going through. He's he's jumped up to thirteen percent at twenty four thousand now. A yep. week or two ago, he was in like five to ten thousand. Yeah, and let, let me check something because 
um, I should be able to see percentage in the top 1%, um, ranked in top 1%. So the GOI is in 11.3% of the top 1% of, of sides. So um, I think that's 207 teams. Um, which they, they, they've got the edge at, at the moment, but um, yeah, I don't know, he just seems to be scoring. But anyway, can, can, can continue on with um, what, what you were saying. Uh, we're just talking about uh, the team that scored well this week, how they yes. got like all these crazy names that you look at and you're like, what are you thinking? But it just it works for a week and they're there laughing. Yep, so the the goalie was there, Shrek Darcy went huge, um, and they had Butters and Ben Ruin on field. Apart from that, you know, you got your Kelly and Green who could be a little bit of pods and Hayden Young as a pod. Um, and they, they loopholed uh Clary's oh no, they they didn't loophole Clary, they loopholed Bailey Humphreys hundred and seventeen, so that yeah. would have helped as as well there, so but oh, well, good, good for them for scoring two five five three. Um, you got any any trades on the table this week? Uh yeah, I've used my last boost. Mm. So what I've done is Lockie Cowan, Owen Davy Jr. and Kay Chandler out. Yep. And I've brought in the dynamic duo of. Sharp and Berry. Yeah. Berry being the Gold Coast Berry. Yep. Um and D Cam in as my F six at the moment. Nice, nice. So a couple boys on the bubble and then um a primo return from injury. I like it. <laughs> yes, and that left me with fifty five K, which leaves me in a decent spot. Yeah, de definitely take that. Um is that it for your side? Uh, yeah, I'm unsure about a captain and vice captain at the moment. I haven't really looked. Well, Jack, by tomorrow, there will be a VC and C two-part YouTube short series on our YouTube channel, which you can go over and watch all the VC and C options there for, for round 10. Don't forget, at break-evens on YouTube, you'll find it all there. As I go into my squad and how my team went, so I scored 2,218. So um, as you're saying, Jack, you know, just a 70, 80-odd points more than you. But I went up 296 ranks, which means I'm ranked 1,533rd. So pretty happy with how my team is going. Um, if I actually look at my team, so I had Dawson as well. Um, Jack Bob Sinclair, who I bought in, I only scored a 65. Um, so I missed out on points there. Um, and I had Chincotta on field and I had Weddle and Mitchell both on the bench. So, um, yes, potential 40-odd points there missed. Um, I had the VC on, on Clary. Decided to risk it with Bond, so missed out on seven points, but he doubled that to 14. Um, Christian Petrarca has been one of the best gets for me so far. He's got 148, which was called 149 last week, or close abouts anyway. It's gone back to 148. Um, slight ankle injury, but they, uh, Goodwin came out a couple of hours ago and said he, he should be good to go as long as there's um, no problems during this week. Um, and he, he did the full train, training session today. Um, Laird, 98, um, got subbed out. It was just a precaution. Is is playing this week. That's okay. Will Day, um, 88. Since I've got him in, he hasn't tongued up. Um, he's, he's been on 60-odd at halftime each time and then done stuff all in the second half, so he needs to pull his head in there. I, I had Hob Hoppers 43, 
Um, and for those who jumped off, Will Ashcroft sucked in. I kept him and he scored a 97, which his break even now is 85. So it's gone down um, a little bit, but still very gettable. Uh, English, 88. Um, but most people have him. Jackie touched on Taranto. Sheasel, 68. And I had Chandler and Ryan um, on the field, which was okay for Ryan, but a 42 from Chandler was not great. Now, trades, I'm already out of boost, so that, that, that's not even on, 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 on the, the radar. On the cards. Um, so I'm making two trades this week. Let me get it up. Um, so. Hopper and Chandler. Uh, Hopper's out for about four weeks, um, and Chandler's break even. Three to five. Yeah, and Chandler's break even is 105, um, and he's not playing at the MCG this week, so he's not getting anywhere near that. Um, so they're both going out. Um, I'm bringing in Darcy Cameron as, as well. I actually um, gave that, um, I guess suggestion to you jack um and you decided to jump on board which i like to see you back in the in hopefully he, he doesn't do too bad um and i'm i'm between harry sharp and tom berry um to bring them in which leaves me with 198k um and that means i can look to go ashcroft to Sam Walsh, possibly next week, um, or a Harry Sheasel to a Walsh, or a Harry Sheasel to a Max Gorn. Um, but we'll see what happens next week. But I can basically get a primo in next week. Um, and yeah, so pretty happy. Um, I'll just quickly go through the break evens team. Um, we we dropped a few ranks this week, Jack. We scored two thousand one hundred and thirty one, and we're now ranked at ten thousand and twelve. So I think we were about six k last week. So dropped um around four k. Jaden Hunt and Chin on on field did not help us. Um. Hang on. No, that was that was your team. I, I accidentally clicked on. Wait, no. Yeah, why, why things like it's showing my team. It is my my uh, app has absolutely shut itself. So we we have gone four k spots down. Um, We've got a bit of a problem in the fact that we can't really get anyone good unless we go Jordan Dugowie, Jack. The goat. Um, here you go. I've, I've got it up. So Hunt and Chincotta, um, Bond Captain, Cogs 93, not bad. We still have Grundy as well. Um, Sheasel, Owens, Chandler, and Mitchell on field, which is where uh, we lost it. Um, so what we had, one, two, three, four, four rookies on field. So that's that's our, our downfall there. We're not sure what I'm going to do or well, what we're going to do with, with trades. As I said, we have... A lot of people that need to go, but not enough trades to do so, not enough money to do so. Um, so we will chat over the next couple of days and figure that out, and we'll let you know next week. Um, now, I did touch on some DPP um, possible changes, didn't I, Jack? Yes. Would you like to hear some statistics? Sure. Sweet. So we know after round 11, um, DPP changes again. And 
players that have played five games and 35% in that position. So I'm not going to say everyone because a few people aren't really super relevant. So first one is if you don't have Jack Sinclair, he's played 70% in defense and 30% in midfield. So he's a bit under that threshold, but he is very close. Um, we'll see what happens with still out. Um, Next up is, well, Nils is injured, so that doesn't matter. Next one is Christian Petrarca, my boy, 69% midfield, 31% forward. Um, now, with a possible uh, ankle niggle, um, we might see him a bit more forward this round, which might creep him up to that 35%. Um, I got him hoping he'd be a DPP possibly possibility but he's played a bit too much midfield the last couple of weeks um but he's still averaging 118 i'm pretty sure so he's still um top eight anyway so i'm happy the big one jack max gorn 63 percent ruck 37 percent forward so as it stands max gorn will be a dpp ruck forward come round 11 or after round 11 um, Jaden Short, 40% defence, 43% midfield. Could get some DPP there. Jack McRae, 64% midfield, 35% forward. So we could get Jack McRae back in the forward line like in the good old days. Um, Sammy Walsh, the man that I was thinking about bringing in next week, 59% midfield, 40% forward. Um, that has to be a big change there for him to lose that. So mm -hmm. um, keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, and Nick Dacos is 29% midfield. I don't think he will get DPP. But those are the big names um, that are looking to get that DPP come round 11. So uh, come next week, we'll just keep uh, updating you with um, everything. Um, I got... All that information from the Supercoach AFL on Twitter because um, I'm a Herald Sun subscriber. I get um, all the articles and stuff. So um, I'm not just making that shit up. Um, I've actually got sources. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, all right. Um, so a different podcast. Uh, so last week, obviously, we had our two discussion points and we had a whole bunch of 1v1s. Um, I looked this week and there wasn't really too many 1v1s, so there won't be any 1v1 content today, um, mainly because all of them got injured last week. Um, <laughs> um, so it's just going to be a quick one. We're going to have our discussion points and then we're going to have the ABC, of course. We can't forget about the ABC, so... Discussion point number one, Jack. Do we trade a Marcus Bond and Pally or another top tier primo for cash? Thoughts, comments, and concerns. So for me, I feel like Bond is a certain no. But even though this is a massive risk, a massive primo going in with an injury cloud. For example, this week, Petrarca. Now, I'm not saying do him exactly, but if you got a pre massive Primo going in with an injury cloud, I feel like it would be smart. And, like, using Petrarca for now, who's at, like, 680K or something like that. 661. 660. Trading him down to even a Merritt who's at 580 or going even lower to a Dugowie, yes, you're getting yourself 100K. Um, and you're getting someone who's consistently shown they can get the ton. The goey in the goey's case, somehow he's only gone under a hundred once. Like no one before the season started could have predicted anything like that. That's true. A lot, a lot of people also would have started him if they knew this. <laughs> <laughs> But for me, I feel like if someone's going in with an injury cloud, 
I feel, and it obviously, like I said, I'm not saying trade Petrarca now. Um, obviously, he's the best example as he's hurt his ankle this week. But um, Melbourne already said he's playing. But, like, for example, even though his price has dropped, if Rory Laird was still mid-650, you know, 650s, which is 595 now, so there's no point. But if he's around 650, he's someone you'd look down to trade down because he's had so many injury concerns this year, rib cage being last week and why he was subbed. Um, it's just so... it's. Just a scary for having a massive primo who could miss weeks. Obviously, you got to trade out a U this week, but like even holding him throughout the season, obviously he didn't have the massive cash, but all that injury problems that was it ruined people's weeks. Um, and then coming with inconsistent scoring afterwards, I just feel like if there's someone who's got a couple of injury clouds or an injury cloud where it's a 50-50 chance where they're playing. Obviously, that's not Petrarca. Petrarca's playing unless something goes wrong. Um, I feel like it's safe to trade them down, but I wouldn't trade a bunt down as he's averaging 130. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what I put is, it's a, it's a great question. It's a very relevant question right now. I've heard a few content creators talk about it um especially the guys over at super coach insider if you haven't um heard about them which if you're listening to us you probably have because um we interact with them all the time um but it is very relevant and could be the big difference so it has worked in the past um where we haven't had the stable cash generation from our rookies um so we haven't been able to have that luxury of uh this person can downgrade because he's made enough cash um and then this person can go up where it's like this person got subbed so they actually lost cash um and then this person's um hasn't played for four weeks but i've had to keep him um so i can see doing that to help with um, keeping your upgrade cadence, which is very important this time of the year, especially in the higher ranks. You need to be upgrading your, your side every week or else you are going to fall in the ranks. So, for example, Jack, I'll I'll give you um, just a quick one here. So let, let's say Bont is the highest averaging super coach player right right now at 129.8 okay if you go bond down even to a sam walsh or a caleb sarong you're banking a hundred k there now who have we both bought in this week dc darcy cameron um who's only 60k from Kate Chandler. Okay. So bang. You can go um, Chandler to Cameron easy. And that's not even doing a downgrade. If you have a boost, you can go like a Chincotta or um, if you still have like a McKenna or someone, you can downgrade them and then you can go a Hopper up to a Sam Walsh. So you're getting rid of three rookies, basically. Well, two rookies and a mid-pricer. And you're getting two primos and a rookie. So you're double upgrading, um, even though you are, you know, going down with one, you know. So um, it could work that way. Definitely. Um, for me pers personally, I'm happy keeping the bond. Um, he's a VCC option for me each week. Um, and I've been quite lucky that I've been able to bring in the players that I've wanted to bring in. And I've been able to trade out a person each time and just have enough cash. So um, I've been very fortunate there. 
Um, but obviously not everyone has been that fortunate. You know, some people might have just traded in Callum Mills, who scored a massive four points, you know. so <laughs> And he's um, out for four weeks. And, and he's out for four weeks. So, um, and also the Bond has two easy games coming up. So um, let me just get his profile up. Um, so obviously he's playing Adelaide this week where um, – uh, he's gone 199 against him um, in 2020. Um, he averages 120 super coach points against Adelaide. 120. You will take that every day of the week. Then he plays Gold Coast, where he has gone. 130 and 133 in two of the last three, and he averages 103 against Gold Coast. And then you get into the tougher, um, you got Geelong and then Port, um, but he averages 104 to 105 between both of those sides anyway. And then he's got North Melbourne just before his bye. Um, so, I mean, you could probably hold him for this week. He's only projected to lose 4K. Um, so he's still going to be 714K if he scores 124 this week. Um, and then you could probably get rid of him next week for three rounds. And then, um, well, actually for four rounds. Because then he has his buy and then he's got... Frio, Collingwood, Sydney, and then he comes home with Essendon, GWS, Richmond, Hawthorne, West Coast, and then Geelong at the end. So um, I can definitely see reasons for it, reasons not. Um, the only way I would, no, other is why I would do it would be just to get that extra rookie off field and, as I said, do that double upgrade get that extra rookie off field, your upgrade cadence keeps ticking over. You're going to move up those ranks. Um, but obviously it is very risky because if he goes off, you know, goes 180 this week, then um, it's been a failed trade unless, you know, both your primos that come in have gone massive. Um, so just make sure... If you do do it, you are bringing in the right people. Still do your research. You know, do all of that that we've, we've spoken throughout the season that you need to do to get the right player to come in. Make sure you do that and you don't just go straight for, um, you know, like a Matt Kennedy um, from Carlton. Who should have a um, who's got a new role and hopefully if he isn't sub should be able to score points. Um, that's a bit risky to me, so um, just make the right choice. All right, so that's going to do us for the first discussion point. So let's move on to the second and final, and that is: should we look at the five hundred to five hundred and eighty ish k range for upgrades this week? I say a hundred percent. Yep. Um, I'm just scrolling around that range now. Let me just bring up some names for you. We've got the go at five hundred and one k who hasn't. He's only gone under a hundred once this year. We got the likes of um Jeremy Finlayson, who's got a average of ninety two point six as a ruck forward, and he's gone over a hundred at least the last four weeks. Got the likes of Adam Saad, who's averaging over 100 in defence. Max Gorn at 518, who's looking to be a ruck forward next week. The likes of Sam Doherty and Nick Newman in defence, who are both averaging mid to high 90s for Carlton. Um, even though there's an injury cloud around him, Jack Steele and Jack Sinclair practically at the same price, the same joy. Um, Jake Lloyd averaging over 100 in defence. Jack Viney, who's averaging 101 with a 
Five round average of 108, who's in 0.4% of teams, looking like a great pod. The likes of Will Powell as a pod in defense, who's just averaging under 100. Andy Brayshaw at 546. The same with James Sicily in defense, who was the second highest price yep. last yep. year. For people who don't have him, Errol Goulden, who's got a free round average of 143. And with Mills, um, um, to go with that. Continue that. It would be great if he could, but he's still got 108 average, which is great for a forward. Yes. Zach Butters, who's been taking the piss this season pretty consistently at 564, alongside Zach Merritt, which we know what Zach Merritt can do and yeah. has been doing pretty consistently this year. Tom Green, who's averaging 110 at 574k. Lockie Neal, we know what Lockie Neal can do, and he's still averaging 106. Jared Witt, who is the most consistent ruck, consistent ruckman in the comp. And for people who don't have him, you got Nick Dacos at 575k, Zebel at 579k, both averaging over 110. And just a little higher than 580. At 581, we've got Luke Ryan, who's averaging 115.9 in defense. Um, Paddy Cripps averaging 105.8. And Josh Kelly averaging 111 at 584K. There's a lot of bargain picks in that price range in all positions that we can get. So for me, it's an absolute yes. Yeah. Um. I've basically said the same thing, you know, with injury after injury after injury to our, our Uber primos, um, it is getting tougher and tougher this season. Should we look at the cheaper primos rather than the big dogs? Um, I had had a list of players, which you named most of them. I'll just go through, but roughly between 500 and 580K, you've got Josh Kelly, Paddy Cripps, Lockie Neal at that higher end around 580. Um, Sicily, Andy Brayshaw um, in the middle. And then you got Jack Sinclair, Cogs, both Darcy and Jeremy Cameron, um, Sam Doherty, John McGoey, and Max Gorn at the lower end. Now, all of these people, except for, I'd probably say, the Goey and... Darcy Cameron, actually, and, um, well, both Camerons as well. Um, all the others have had a season where they've averaged 110 plus. Um, now, we know Cameron is good for 105 average um, in, in the forward line, so that's fine. Um, um, Jerry Cameron started on fire, um, has cooled off a little bit, but we know he can go at a 95 to 100. And Dagoe is looking like probably 105, um, 100 to 105 average there. So, um, you know, these are all great, cheap bargain options. Um, and there's a, all those names I, I basically named, you can make 140K at a minimum if you go bond down. Um, and then that, that's all to talk about before you, you could do a double upgrade. So um, the only thing and the big thing is that you need to pick these guys up at the right time to be for it to be very beneficial. Um, you know, go on one of these guys and especially one of the pod options like a, the Goey, um, I'd probably say a Doherty, um don't know how many people have jumped on Brayshaw, but these pods, they could help you with an upgrade the following week or this week as you'll be banking that cash, that extra cash, rather than going a Petrarca or um, a Clary who are 660 plus. You can bank that cash for next week. Um, I'm definitely going to be looking at the cheaper side in the near future. Um, but again, do your research. Make sure you bring in the right player because these are all great options. But 
they, uh, especially Doherty, who hasn't had the role that we thought, um, could see a little change coming in the next few rounds. Wait for that, then jump on him. Do it at the right time because then you can restart your cash gen. You can keep that uh, upgrade cadence ticking over. Um, and it'll be a lot easier, especially with the rookies. The main factor is the rookies. We don't have good ones. You know, we're 50 50 between Harry Sharp and Tom Berry, who could both be subs this week, or, um, you know, they're just Drop. one. one um, injured player coming back from being dropped. So um, get the warm bodies on field. Um, anything else to add on any of those points, Jack? Um, not to add on to those points, but I've got a little mini discussion here. Yep. I think 11,285 people don't know the difference between the day courses. <laughs> I would love to know how Josh Dacos, who is averaging 92, has 11,000. He's in 11,000 teams. The fourth most in Collingwood. He's got a free round average of 80, and 11,285 people have picked the wrong Dacos. <laughs> yeah, but they've got 472k. That's a bargain. That's a bargain for Nick Dacos. What? <laughs> Where's the 125 that he scored? <laughs> um, I think they've definitely been pod options because, to be fair, Josh Dacos has been playing pretty well. Um, oh, but... he's been playing very well. He's just not a super coach, or, um, good player. <laughs> so, if... 11, so if there's anyone out there you want, Nick. Nick. Yeah, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Not Josh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And that will bring us to your favorite segment, Jack. The Aiden Bonner Club. Well, have I got news for you? We have had, for the first time ever, Someone pull votes for a second time. No. Cumberland, no. He's been dethroned. Cumberland didn't play. Yes, he's been dethroned. Well, no, he hasn't. Oh. Because we've won a vote this week in 110 minutes and nine seconds, by the way. It's quite, quite a fair bit of time of football, you'd think. I'm and pretty think sure that's a full game. <laughs> You'd think at the Essendon Football Club, you'd, you'd think, it, you know, they've been performing pretty well. I think they've been on a little slump the last couple of weeks. But um, scoring nine super coach points in that time, we have Sam Wiedemann. Ah, oh, yes, yes, Sam. Great well job. Done. Well done. Now, also, for the first time ever, we've got the triple threat. Three people... Pulled the same score in the time frame. Wow. So, the first person in 29 minutes and 41 seconds with seven super coach points from the Carlton Football Club. Surprisingly, it's not Patrick Cruz with that snap that he tried, but it is, in fact, Ed Kerno. Oh, well okay. done, buddy. Well done, Ed. Secondly, in 31 minutes and 51 seconds, there's a bit of a theme here from the Essendon Football Club. <laughs> we have everyone's look rookie delight, Owen Davy Jr. Well done, lad. Yes, well done. And the last person with two votes to push him up to three votes. Oh, okay. In 29 minutes and 33 seconds, I think you'll guess it when I say this team name. Obviously, seven super coach points from the Collingwood Football Club. Oh, I know that. We have the super sub himself, Reef McInnes. Congratulations, oh, buddy. Reefy. You are on again. Reefy, what are you done? He, he, he's, he's getting dropped this week. <laughs> if I'm Craig McRae, I'd keep him to the sub. Don't start him. 
And with three votes, the impossible has happened. In 27 minutes and 8 seconds, this player did a Tyrone Vickery and failed to touch the ball or impact the game once. <laughs> and then he got concussed. And from the Port Adelaide Football Club, the man that is seeing stars... We have Todd Marshall. Congratulations, big yes. fella. Nick, he, he's, his nickname is, is now Donuts. <laughs> the fact, 27 minutes and 8 seconds, you don't get near the ball. You don't, you don't get a spoil or smother. You don't even have a failed tackle. You've got nothing. <laughs> Doesn't even get a sniff. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure Port won this week as well. <laughs> so obviously, the leaderboard does not change. Um, in third place, we still got the Collingwood man himself, Daniel McStay, on three votes and negative two super coach points. Yes, yes Danny. In second place, we still got the dynamic duo, the orange juice of Riley Garcia and Tyler Sonzi on three votes and negative six super coach. <laughs> Leaving John Cena, Dr. Fagonomics himself, the attitude child, Noah Cumberland, in first place with three votes and negative 12 super coach uh, points. Reef Lickers better not play for the rest of the season or else Cumberland's been. Uh, Overtaken on on both. <laughs> well, as soon as I saw McKenna seven, I was like, I think he's got like two votes. I think he's gonna be winning. <laughs> and I, I look because obviously I've got the tally of all the votes, and yes. I'm like, three votes, McKinnis, McKinnis, no, two votes. Where is he? Then you just see one vote, McKinnis, like <sighs> the first name. I'm pretty sure, and it's just like, no. <laughs> 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 and obviously. Because he's been in twice, um, he's still on the free vote, so it's still the free lower scores. Yep. Because he's still classified as a free vote player. Yep. Nice. So that's why he's not in the leaderboard. I like it. I like it. All right, mate. Well, that's going to do for the podcast. Do you have anything else to add this um for this podcast, or are you happy for me to sign off? I've got um I've got a personal um message for Craig McRae. Play Reef McInnes and then sub him out <laughs> at the end of half time so he can be on top. <laughs> Please. <laughs> no, we want Cumberland with the negative 12. All righty. Well, that's going to do us for tonight's podcast anyway. Thank you all for watching and listening in. Don't forget, you can find us on Twitter at the Break Evens Pod, at Break Evens Pod. Sorry. Uh, trying to hit 500 followers over there. Hit that follow button. We're going to have all of our content linked all on there. Um, I'm putting my team review in the thread because I'm unable to do the video tonight um, and I don't have any other time to do so. Um, you can find us on YouTube at The Break Evens. On the road to 200 subs, hit that subscribe button and get ready for the YouTube shorts. They're about to pop off tomorrow starting at 8 a.m every two hours we will have a new short up for our buy keep sell and avoids and our vc and c options make sure you go check them out a lot of good information there and on facebook the break evens pod like our page give us a follow and similar to twitter all of the links will be in there so once and a final thank you again for watching and listening on YouTube or Apple Podcast. Good luck for round 10. And until next time, it's bye for now. See ya.